Well, welcome back to Oracle TV at Oracle AI World. Do you, do you think that uh, Dave understood what uh, ambient listening was? I don't know. I question that. <laughs> All right, Fritz is sorry, Dave. We're giving you a hard time back here. Fritz and I are diving into a story that's all about scale, innovation, and transformation. And when you think scale, you think AT&T, one of the largest telecom providers in the world. And it's been on a major modern modernization journey, shrinking a 34 data center footprint, simplifying decades of IT, and moving to Oracle Cloud to cut cost, boost productivity, and accelerate innovation. Sounds amazing. And to talk about this and what it takes to run an operation at this scale, we're joined by Michelle Salas, Assistant Vice President of Financial Systems, and Ramya. Oh, Shauna, I see what you've done to me. <laughs> you've done every single introduction, and you've given me a name that I have no chance of pronouncing. <laughs> Can you pronounce it? Do you want me to try it? How, how do you do want you? me to try it? <laughs> It's okay. okay. You can call me Ramya. Okay, Ramya. <laughs> it's about a sentence long. It's like, it looks, I wish I could it's pronounce beautiful. it. It looks beautiful. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Um, okay, so let's talk about running, Michelle, a global operation like AT&T that comes with such complexity of 34 data centers. Um, what, are you, what are some of the biggest challenges that you face in keeping these systems efficient while serving obviously millions and millions of customers every day. I'm going to focus on Oracle and you know the, the our move to SaaS. And then one of the main reasons that we moved to the SaaS platform was because we were not being very disciplined in our patch maintenance. And you know when there were issues or bugs and, and getting the fixes and so moving to that SaaS environment has allowed us to be compliant. Uh, has allowed us to have security from a data. You know, our data is certified and secure within the SaaS platform. So those complexities that we had initially from um, a custom legacy environment has now turned into a more of a, we're on the forefront. We don't have to wait anymore. We're able to join Oracle with this AI journey and be at the forefront. And it's, it's pretty exciting. So when you think about those challenges and how you've kind of fixed so yeah. many of them, all of them, um, how do you measure success? So I think it's all about speed, honestly. Now that we're on the SaaS, on the cloud, how can we get data to our executives that is relevant and accurate? You know, so many systems, so many, now that we have it all within the four walls of Oracle, we're now able to really kind of ensure that our data is certified, our data is gonna get to our executives quickly, and we're going to be, and so those are the measures of success. And then also just about from an end user perspective, having them start to have confidence in the data as well, because when you have a legacy system, a lot of times the data is being input from so many other feeders, Sure. you don't necessarily have the accuracy. So that's one of the biggest advantages and measurements of success. Well, that's, one of the most interesting things we've heard about, Ramya, is the ask finance. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, Michelle talked about data going to the executives. There's also a big population of uh, operations people who, who run the company, right? The day-to-day -day work is being still being done by a lot of people. And for them, um, perfect data, data that's accurate and timely, that's very, very important. And in the past, they, all they had access to was raw data sitting in some tables and people with like rudimentary SQL knowledge had to write queries, scary to yeah. think about, right? <laughs> but that's all they had access to. But now we have um, come up with this Ask Finance platform, which is basically a um, chat GPT-like experience, but confined to AT&T data, proprietary data, and it's real time. It uh, accesses our tables and gives them a very um, easy user interface where they can go and query just human English language, and they get all their answers that they want real time so they can do their job. Yeah. This is for people who are truly running the operations, the accounts payable clerks, the people that close the books, right? People that need real-time information. 
That's wonderful. And how and how do you think that's that AI and this and what you're talking about with this finance transformation has changed the role of a finance professional at AT and T? It, it has started to do a lot of things already, but uh, we are still in early stages when sure. it comes to value realization. And um, I, I think there's been a little bit of a catch up that we were trying to do. Oracle was coming up with its solutions and we were also trying to build our own in-house platforms. But we are finally at a point where we can talk about intelligent document recognition where um, invoices can be scanned and like automatically fed into the system. And in our general ledger area where we can do code combination corrections, and um, uh, the possibilities are endless. We have just barely scratched the surface. Yeah, I was watching the demos that Steve yes. was showing, and I'm like, oh yeah, that, that's going <laughs> to save a lot of time. Uh, what about AI agents? How have those started to support AT&T's team? So we have already come up with one agent in our supplier lifecycle management space. But um, like I said, we have had a little bit of a slower start. But we have what we have started to do is um, crowdsource use cases okay. so that way we can launch very quick rather than wait for people to come and give us use cases or us trying to figure out what may be needed. By crowdsourcing, the idea is to just go, go to everybody, everybody who's experiencing a current pain or something that can be done better and make sure those ideas come to us and our speed to market would be rather quick. Great. They taught us how to write agents and Shauna <laughs> is going to help you out with All right. by writing some. I am going to help you out. Thank you. <laughs> this is what you get for making me. <laughs> I knew you were going to do something <laughs> like that. Well, you know, Michelle, when you think ahead, what are the big opportunities for continuing this transformation? So one thing that we're currently doing, which is going to allow us to grow even more, is that the finance environment, that SaaS platform that I was talking about, we started to bring in um, supply chain. So now for our executives, they're going to start to see a golden thread from purchasing to pay, from source to settle. They're gonna be able to start to see that all of that data, data's power. Yes. And so when you start to see that data in one place, certified again, watermarked, that, that gives confidence. So that's a huge opportunity that we're doing. And then with that, and the confidence is starting to grow with our consumer, with our clients, you start to look at other areas. You look at expense. Um, Ramia mentioned supplier life management, life cycle management. We implemented that last month. So we're building more into our platform, giving more visibility and more co confidence, you know, data confidence. Yeah. So that's. That's an important part. The, in the top, you talked about compliance and being more regulated and then working with finance people yep. who, you know, risk averse by and large. <laughs> yes. I don't want to say they all yes. are, but um, how has it been getting them on board and, and really across the company that is regulated with, I, with AI and, and what, were some of the, what were some of the hurdles and how have you managed to get past them? Change is hard, yeah. you know, so when you've been on a legacy system for over 20 years and now you're moving to a more platform specific where where you have to do things in a specific way that is hard and so what we had to do was show folks that you're still going to get the same results it's just a different way yeah and we're continuously improving that as we go because we're learning as well you know so we're learning in better ways and one of the th values that we see is the releases you know the quarterly releases allows us to really stay on top of our game from challenging how we operate and understanding why are other cus companies, customers of Oracle, why are they doing things differently? Do we need to do things differently? So we're always asking those questions of the why. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely, and I, I hear some themes when you're talking, and there's speed, and there's efficiency, and there's giving time back. You know, and, uh, you know, it alleviating some of that, which that's been a common th theme actually throughout all of our conversations. Um, well, I have a question for you both. I mean, just when we think about where we are right now in this AI moment and also at Oracle AI World, what do you think about this experience? What are you going to take from this moment? It could be from keynotes or any, anything else. So for me, and then I'll let Ramya talk quickly, 
I love the agentic AI, you know, all of those capabilities. You know, one of the things that I say is AT&T has invested in this foundation of this SaaS platform. They've invested in us. They've given us trust and confidence. Now we need to start to show them the value. And the way you start to show the value is by having that out front, you know, the agentic, where you put it for the end users. And even the CFO, they can start to see that those dollars, that value, yes. quicker. So, so um, I've been coming to the AI world, previously cloud world, yeah. for a few years now, and there is suddenly a sense of urgency. I mean, we have been trying to run, but now running is just not enough. We, need to <laughs> we are That's going to be so left, true. every day something is changing. Ever since I think the mouse clicks were in, you know, um, the mouse was invented, I don't think we have seen that kind of a drastic shift in technology, right? This is a game changer and, you know, the what I'm going to take back is a sense of urgency. Oh, I forgot about the mouse clicks. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, well, it's interesting because we've talked to a lot of, of customers about, you know, the, the, the urgency and, and how to get started. And, and you hear different things like it's some it's like a top down sort of initiative. We've got to get going. But a lot of them, too, it's like we're just, we're going to take some quick wins, some low hanging fruit. We're going to get started, and then the momentum just builds and builds because people are like, oh, yeah, that can work. Even a 5% improvement here and a 5% improvement there, it starts to add up. Are you seeing the same yeah. thing? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Fabulous. It's just being able to start. Yes. Right? Yeah. And right. I think it's noting back to your we're in a time of change, and it's like being able to em embrace that because we are in a sprint. And yes. just just get in there and go. Yes. And it's and we get that from the our top down as well as the value from the from the lower. Yeah. Got to yeah. go both yeah. ways. It's, yeah. that's the best. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both. We thank appreciate you. your time thank you. and thank you for being here. All right. Well, it's incredible to see and talk and be inspired by our customers. And now we are going to go to the hub where Kay is and I believe that she is with Choctaw Nation and their activations.